Inflation is going down, but not in every sector. And that's what we want to talk about today. What sector is planning to raise the prices next year? With more than 10%. With more than the current inflation. Yeah. yeah. So that's really important to know because this week inflation was in the news. Because what happened? Well, it's actually in the news every week. But I think what we saw this week, Powell, he made the markets move into what they call bullish territory. Yeah? So the market was actually on Wednesday, the Nasdaq, the tech stocks, they were going up 4%, the S&P 500, almost 3%, the Dow 2.5%. And why? Just because Powell said that he plans that possibly the rate hikes will not be as big or as, 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 as spiky as they have been until now. Um, so, so what is expected at the moment is a 0.50% rate hike. This is 65%. Until Wednesday, there was a 65% chance calculated in the market that the rate will go up with half a percent. And that moved to 77% chance. So let's say 80% chance that the... So it will be 50 basis points. Yeah, it will be normally 50 basis. If it's 0.75 basis points, then you will see a big surprise in the market, presumably in uh, in December. So um, yeah, all in all, uh, what, what Powell said main takings is that the supply chain issues are easing. So you see that the prices are not rising that much anymore. Um, there is still growth, not as much, but is it about growth of what? Growth on economic on, growth. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, but it's slowing down. You saw also that the new job openings, so the new jobs on the market, they are slowing down as well. So the Do, number of today it's Friday. It's also important day. Yeah, 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 yeah. Definitely. So, all in all, um, yeah, where we saw in the beginning of November, on the 10th of November, that the uh, the consumer price index was still quite aggressive. Eh? So, there was, there was still a lot of, of rise in prices. You saw that it starts to slow down by the end of the month. Yeah. So, that made the market... Move. It's actually strange, yeah. eh? because if it's, it's also, always, I find it also contradictory. I understand it, obviously, but it's so strange that markets move up because of the fact that it's going worse. It's, yeah, but it's less going, worse than expected. Yeah, 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 but still, I mean, less jobs. But this, that, that, yeah, so yeah. it's it's not a it's not a positive thing. You would say everybody should have work. Yeah, yeah, completely. Should be, yeah, completely. should have economic, but it's always a, looking for a balance. Yeah, and that's what we uh, what we saw this week. That that balance. I mean, the the, the Fed has, as we all know, a two percent uh, uh, inflation uh, target. Eh? Yeah, and uh, at the moment it's going toward four point nine approximately. So they're still about three percent away from what they actually want. Yeah, and you see also that um, in Europe, um, uh, Europe follows always, no? The US. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> With, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, but it has yeah. a direct impact on, and we always like to share what clients think. And, and uh, I, I told you yesterday, people say, yeah, but I, I, now I don't want to go in the dollar. No. And they want to post. No, what I meant is that now the, the um, European central banks, they are not, they want to have a little they want more increases because mm. they want really they think that that ne is necessary to slow down the economies mm. yeah yeah, yeah. I, I, I think they've already sense. some warnings yeah makes sense makes sense but there's one sector they said well we're not going uh, to do anything with that we are going to raise our prices yeah and i was quite surprised it was in the news and it was only a small article this week and um that was about one company, so not a sector, but we're going to talk about it a little bit broader. But oh, mm. I'm going to talk about that company, and it's a beautiful company. Which is? It's a Heineken. Heineken, okay. Our brewer. Yeah. Our I think we talked about it in the past. Didn't we? Yeah, of course, of course, but in another setting. Mm -hmm. and, and as always, we like our history. Um, and I have some papers in front of me because I had some, uh, I did my homework. Um, it was um, um, the first. Time they brewed was in 1873, and that was Gerard Heineken. He bought the company, but he didn't bought it. He didn't found no, it. No, he didn't found it, and he even didn't bought it. His mother bought it for him. I didn't know that. Not really. How funny is that? So that is. Uh, he had a um, um, uh, and had a, he had a jump start, and in Heineken it only has three components, and they change the the setting every year, and it's based on the uh, harvest. So they have the, the three the components of the beer. Yeah, no, no, yeah. So no, the the amounts of components they play with it every year and also in every region, because they have only um, in it malted barley, water, and hops. But if one, uh, yeah, the water is quite constant, but also it differs in different regions. So they change they change the beer every year, how they make it, because the outcome must always be the same. 
The taste is similar, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They have tasters, eh? they fly all around the world and they taste the beer. Every every day they taste the beer. Um and it's really nice to go to the brewery in Amsterdam too. You can have a tour, it's a mm. museum and at the end you get free beer. So maybe it's interesting for you. Uh, I wanted to say two things more about the company because they have, uh, I want to say something about the um, uh, alcohol free beers. Yeah. And it's quite funny because in the Netherlands, for example, you you are allowed to call it alcohol free beer with a maximum percentage alcohol of 0.1%. Okay. But in Germany, Denmark and Belgium, it's 0.5. So it's more. Yeah. So if you drink there an alcohol-free beer, you still get alcohol in your body. Yeah, you can still have 0.5 percent alcohol, and because there's a lot of import of beer, so a lot of companies they have, uh, they imported, for example, beer from Germany into the Netherlands, and they don't change all the 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 labels. So then you think you're drinking alcohol-free beer with a maximum of 0.1, and you drink 0.5. So, but the, there are brands that I think Heineken has one as well. No? It's, the, the, it's called in the Netherlands Null Point Nullotje, yeah, zero point zero Q. That yeah. there, I assume, when it's on the bottle, you can't say that it has alcohol. No, but it, maybe it has zero or zero point one. But in Germany, it can have between zero, zero and zero point five. Um, they have three hundred brands, eh? and operating in one hundred ninety countries. But and another one that was, it's only on the market. So, so one of those brands, mm. it's called. Lagunitas. What does Lagunitas mean? Do you know that? Does it have Lagunitas? Mean? Yeah. Yeah, like the small lagoons or something? I don't know. Yeah, probably. It but but it's, on the, it's only available in California mm -hmm. since July of this year. And it has no alcohol. Mm. Don't go to that. Go to, it's no alcohol, but it has THC in it. Oh, so, so it's like, yeah, the, uh, this what the, I read something about it, that they're in this move of getting stuff for marijuana. No? Yeah, but not like the CBD. <coughs> so the CBD you can should buy in Europe in all the shops and everything. No, THC, so the, what is normally in a joint. And yeah, they yeah, have yeah. two versions with 5 milligram and 10 milligram in it. And they, they, they can, they sell it in cans, only in California, and they are $8 per can. But it's quite a move, no? Yeah, it's interesting stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I found it interesting. Okay, now b go back to the to the stock. To, to the stock itself. It's yeah. not a, a not a really exciting stock. If you look at the uh, what did it do? Is uh, it positive this year? No, but it's slightly negative. It was a little bit above the hundred at the beginning of year. Uh, beginning of this year, it's now trading at ninety one, and the the lowest point was seventy some seventy one. Okay. So it's between 100 and 70 trading this year, and that's not so. It's around 10 percent down. So mm. down a little. Bit. But back to the statement you made in the beginning: inflation. They already increased the prices this year one time with 5.8 percent and one time with 3.4 percent, and they announced this week that they will increase the prices for next year. The the, the prices that they charge the um, the bars and the cafes um, with 10.7 percent by January. Wow. That's quite something. That's an extra increase, yeah, yeah, especially for next year when you think prices go down. I don't know what the component is of the beer price in the total inflation calculation, but it's interesting. Yeah, they, they said uh, it's it's uh, we have a lot of higher uh, costs. Of course, they get a lot of sp stuff from Ukraine, but um, but it's yeah. also interesting to see what it will be the effect on the whole hospitality branch, no, in the horeca. Yeah. I think if if it's going to be a crisis or you know or, or around the zero level, yeah, yeah. Um, which sector will be affected quite soon? That is the uh, that are the bars and the cafe. Yeah. People are drinking. People people are complaining already that uh, the beer price hunger has gone up. Mm. If they gone up with eleven percent the beginning of this year, I think they will feel it definitely. Oh yeah, for sure. Because you saw that also in um, during Corona. They have a lot of their incomes are coming from um, bars and cafes, and not so much from people they buy it at home. Mm -hmm. So I think they're gonna face really uh, headwinds. What and is the dividend on, on, on Heineken? Is it is it high or is it high? That's a good question. Um, let me let me talk about it. Um, so, the, but they also said in a statement, yeah, no, you know what people can do with bars because they say on average between ten and fifteen percent. If you tap a beer, if you make a beer, you lose ten or fifteen percent of the yeah of what's in the in the in the barrel. The barrel. And they say you if you do it better, you can you can go down until four percent. So that's really an argument, you know. For, oh, we have to say something in the, in the statement in the okay, press so release. Give so then they're probably going to give courses how to tap the better beer and yeah. make money on that as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is the structure of Heineken. It's probably uh, uh, I, I sent it already to my colleague, so he will put it in the screen because you have the Heineken holding and yeah. you have the Heineken NV. Mm -hmm. 
and large green MV is a holder of 53% of the holding and that, that's owned by the family uh -huh. for almost 90% Heineken. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So they have most of the stake in here and they have 50.005% in Heineken MV. So they Heineken MV is the one that's on the market. Yeah, right? yeah, that's yeah, the yeah. and they, they produce everything. So. We put it in the screen, it's quite an uh, interesting uh, setting. It's so similar to... simply course. made, eh? it looks like uh, made by uh, somebody on a word. Yeah, word students. Yeah. But it's a little <laughs> bit similar to Porsche, yeah, yeah. the structure. So they control, uh, the family Heineken controls the strategy yeah. by this, this picture. Dividend, dividend to close down. Um, dividend is really important because it's quite a stable company. Mm -hmm. So dividend is always important. And I see, I've here this, the, the dividend over the last mm -hmm. four years. And um, what you see is, and I've also uh, set it out against the, um, the profit. And um, you see here the profit per share, and then, and then you see normally they pay out around 50% of the dividend. Yeah, yeah. Even in 2020, when they made a loss per share due to COVID, eh, because yeah, yeah. people were not drinking in bars anymore, they paid out a dividend of 70 cents. So that, that it's a big difference here, eh, because I looked at InBev, yeah. and they only paid 20%. Out so, of the profit. Yeah, so they, they pay much less. Yeah. Much less. They have only a dividend yield of 0.6%. So, so to close down, in 2020 they made a loss. In 2021, 5.7 euros profit per share, 4.8 profit per share this year, mm -hmm. and they ex estimate around 5.20 cents for next year profit. But I think due to this, and maybe around a mild crisis or mm. the zero level, this will be lower. This will be lower. And if they pay out, uh, and they have now the, the uh, they paid out around 50%, mm. but it's now lower. And you see that also here. It's about 14 times the earnings, right? Yeah. Price earnings 14, no? Right? No, 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 more, 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 no, 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 no. The, the share is 91 and the profit per share is uh, around five. So it's about 20. Yeah, yeah, 25. Yeah, so InBev is 31, eh? 31 much more expensive, yeah. So it's less expensive, but I think that they will face headwinds because of the increments and then also the dividend. Of the prices. Yeah, the dividend, they will lower the yeah, dividend. Possibly. But possibly. you, InBev, InBev, what is... What's no, 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 I, I have only a few key takes just to compare. I mean, you see InBev is much more expensive and they have done a lot more takeovers. I don't have so much history details about them, but they took over Budweiser, of course. Yeah. And that's why they have also much higher debt ratios than Heineken. Yeah. Um, they're much bigger. Eh? They're, they have a, a, the a biggest market, in the world. Yeah, they have a total assets about 208 billion. And uh, Heineken, I think, is around 50 something. So we've got yeah. four, four times Heineken in, in, in one value of, uh, of InBev. The debt is about 80 billion, but that is, and that is more or less steady now. It was, that was always the biggest concern for InBev. That's why the stock price came down from almost 150 yeah. to. At certain points, I think even 35. Now it's back at about 60. The price target is about 62 in the market. So all in all, I mean, um, also here, I think the worst might be behind InBev. You know, they are doing much better than they were doing uh, in 2019, 2020. They're really struggling. You know that also, right? clients. They were, they were, yeah, they, 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 they the made biggest. too many big takeovers. They, they, they were a little bit too yeah. aggressive. They, they put the brake pedal in a little bit and they, they're trying to rent make a yeah, yield out of their investments over the yeah. past decade, I think. All in all, um, for dividend, you should not buy it. It's 0.6%, so it's, it's, in that sense, it's not interesting. Like I said, price target 62, current price 56. This year, however, it's in the profits. It's in the positive, uh, the black figures. It's about 4% yeah. up. Yeah. Which is, oh, the, the share price? Yeah, it was yeah. at 55, 70 at the beginning of the okay. year. And, it's and Heineken went down 10%. Yeah, so, so you can see that in a year like this, they were still capable of... Uh, but probably they will also increase the prices. We didn't see it. I yet. think they've done it already. Yeah, yeah, but it's also Heineken. I think Heineke they've done it already. They followed... Yeah, but Heineken also increased at 9% this year. Yeah, yeah. So, so uh, let me see if I could see something here about it. But I think they will fall off. And... Um, yeah, they will increase the revenues, but yeah, they, and they will increase the beer prices. Yeah, so they will also do it until uh, probably around 10%. Yeah. So that's, and that is going to be, I think that will give them some headwind because it's already expensive and people will, will think, okay, football, do I watch it in the, in the bar, do I watch it at home now? Instead of watching it three times in the bar, I go two times yeah, to the bar. Yeah, of course, and that's still their biggest income yeah. flow. So I think that eh, even that the Fed things, Things are getting better. Inflation is coming down. Not for all the sectors. Those guys will increase. Yeah. And that will give them sure. some headwinds. So sure. watch out with that, no? I think so. Thank you for watching. Was it, no?
Yeah. Stay safe. Bye bye. Thank you. Oh, 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 oh,